you've not been honest with us. The man turns up here with a book he has written. You harassed him, you threatened him. He's the one threatening me. Um, so like I said, I, 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 I love the series. Uh, it's been a, a roller coaster ride, that's for sure. Um, definitely a lot to chew on there. Um, so you were telling me the other day that it wasn't really shot like a TV show though. It was taught, it was shot like a movie. Can you, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, I feel like, you know, when I've worked in TV and it's very, we'll do maybe one or two takes and move on. But like, once we've got something that's usable, let's just go. And with this, um, <laughs> you know, we would do up to 11, 12, 13 takes if necessary and lots of different setups and, and, um, and so I think, yeah, but they just felt like, I never felt like I was in a rush. Mm -hmm. TV, sometimes you feel like you're working against the clock, but with this, it, it felt like we had all the time in the world. Well, I think another thing too is, you know, when you watch TV and I, and I love TV and there's some great TV stuff, but it's, it's, it's entertainment, I think. And I feel like with this, Quaron was, was trying to make art, right? In the same way that, you know, one of his movies would be a piece of art. And I think it's kind of interesting that they're pushing the form, the TV form in this way, to tell a long term, a long yeah. form story in an artistic way. I, I don't think that he would be able to do anything that wasn't art. Mm -hmm. And and when he's working alongside Emmanuel Lubezki, um, the two of them together are artists, you know, it, it's so exciting to be around them um, mm -hmm. while they're, on set because they get as excited as I imagine they were when they're filming Y Tu Mama Tambien. You mm -hmm. know, it's like two little boys that are s fresh out of film school and just can't believe that they're on a real movie set and making this. Like, that's how it feels. It feels so genuine and pure and you want to just, it's contagious. You want to help them reach their goal and make the best thing possible. It feels like everyone is just working together to have the best outcome, which is not, you know, it's rare. Given the conceit of the show too, that, you know, um, in, in some ways you're playing the younger version of Kate Blanchett, but it's do, done in a different way because it's through the book, through the character, and it's not, uh, I mean, she is the younger version, but is she really, like, it's kind of, there's there's a little more of a remove, I think, there because we're Freedom reading the dramatization. There, yeah. yeah, what was that? So in that case though, like, when you when you create your role, you you have you I suppose you create your own performance. Then you don't necessarily have to pattern it on whatever Kate Blanchett's doing or vice versa. Do you? Yeah, I think you know we know that Nancy Bridgestock met Catherine very briefly, and so she knows how she looks, she mm -hmm. knows how she sounds, yeah, and she maybe knows some of her tics. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a physicality, there's a way, there's a gait, there's a way someone walks into a room and presents themselves, and so those things, there's specific things that I wanted to get. But beyond that, it was really great to have the freedom of being able to create something more or not having to be like a copy, you know? And then I think on top of that, we all change. I'm, I'm so different to who I was 20 years ago. I think there's a freedom in that as well. I, I, every several years, we, we become quite different. And so I, I think that adds to an element of it as well. Do you think that a show like this when it's being released weekly, because I kind of binge watched it, right? In like in like five hours, and, and which was great. But do you think that this is gonna be the kind of show that's gonna make a lot of people talk and there's gonna be think pieces and people are gonna unpack each episode and everybody's gonna have their own their own perspective and their own opinion of, of the characters? Definitely, and I really hope that audiences, you know, of, of course there's the fun of watching it weekly as it comes out, but then it's also a show to be watched twice once sure. you know what happens it's it's going to be one of those shows where you can go back and and watch it again because we so we were all very serious about making sure that it all factually made sense sure that people could go back and they wouldn't be like well that doesn't you wouldn't have, you know and so i really hope people watch it twice all right well thank you very much for your time ladies and gentlemen an inspiration to us all Catherine ravenscroft <laughs> All these years, you have concealed parts of yourself from the world. To a beacon of truth, somebody who inspires me every, every day. Hey, so I'm really excited to talk to you. I'm such a, a huge fan. I, I gotta say, um... Thank you. Thank you. Is, it, is it possible I recognize you? Uh, no, no, no. I, we've, I've never interviewed you before. I've always wanted right, to interview okay. you. Though, All right, though, well, nice to meet you. Projecting. <laughs> 
Um, I really loved you in The Spy a couple of years ago on Netflix. I thought that was a really great limited series. And I was just wondering, I thought it was such a, a great dramatic role for you. Um, and I was wondering, how does doing something like that compare to, to working on, on, a, on a show like, like Disclaimer? Because I, because I, I heard that Alfonso Cuaron shot it like a movie rather than like a TV show. Well, you know, what does that really mean shooting it like a movie? It means he's got, you know, one of the best cinematographers in the world. But ultimately, <clears throat> ultimately, they're pretty similar, right? So for me, performing a particular role, I have the same obligation to make sure, how do I make sure that guy in the spy is like a real person? How do you make sure that he's speaking like a real unique person and behaving like one? And the same with this guy, Robert, in Disclaimer. How do you make sure he doesn't sound corny? How do you make sure he feels real to me? And then hopefully I perform it well enough that the audience believe in it. Well, you know, the interesting thing about it, too, is that I felt when I, when I saw the first episode, I thought I had him pegged as kind of one type of guy. And then as it goes on, he really kind of reveals these layers as he as he goes through the ringers. And I, and I felt that I really kind of empathized with him a lot more than I thought I would and, I, and related to him in some ways too. I mean, that is a thing though. I do feel like there's another version of this that could have existed where he was a two-dimensional character and kind of predictable, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when I first read the script, Alfonso gave it to me and he goes, uh, what do you think? And I go, great. I go, this is the role I want to play. And, and he said, well, actually, I've given that to Kevin Klein already. <laughs> so he goes, I want to play Robert. I said, Robert, I go, the thing with Robert is... I've seen this guy before. Sure. And so we worked a lot, a lot of back and forth in trying to make sure that Robert on the page was someone that you hadn't quite met before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm kind of pretty obsessive about language and rhythm and then accent, but we went back and forth a lot on what are the, what are the things that make Robert different to character by Hugh Grant or one of these other great English actors because I said you can get anyone there's about 20 people within 10 miles who can play <laughs> Robert but if you want me to play it I want to make him a little bit different I want to understand why this guy goes on that journey so it was a great collaboration and a lot of back and forth I mean, I, I loved watching you with Kate, but I thought that you were just as good with Cody Smith McPhee, especially your scenes together, I thought were, were awesome. And I was just wondering if you could talk to me a little bit, because I don't think I've ever seen you play, you know, a father in this way in a, in a show before. And I thought it was kind of refreshing. I thought you were great. Yeah, it's a different way to me playing a father in uh, the sequel to Borat, you know, because I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little different. That yeah. version, I don't see her as human for most of the movie. But... <laughs> you know, his relationship with his son is quite smug he's so proud that he's a better dad than she is a mother mm -hmm. and yeah i don't want to ruin anything but he eventually we realized that he's not as good a dad as he thinks he is but well yeah. thank you very much thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me i really appreciate it all right lovely it. to meet you okay, okay man. See you, Bye. Thanks.